This video will help you better understand Google Voice, how you can maximize its use, and also what settings will help you communicate effectively with parents and students. Now I'd like to point out in this video, I'm using my Google Voice number that I use for Compton Unified School District, and you can see that my account up here has changed. Um, the reason I'm using this particular number is because I've linked it to a cell phone number and not a landline. I've not only linked it when I was setting up the account, but I also downloaded the app to my iPhone, um, logged into my um, Gmail account that I've associated with this number, um, and that's allowed me to use both my computer and my cell phone um, when placing or receiving calls. Um, now, we want to protect our cell phone numbers, of course, so there are specific settings that we want to create and use um, in order to do that. So now we're going to look at the top here at the settings. Um, the first one is the audio settings, and this is where you can test, and you can see that I'm talking and it's reacting. Um, so this is where you check your microphone. You can check the ringing, or you can check your speakers, which are the same. Um, you also have options here to change how sound is coming in and out of the system. There's also a help <clears throat> center here that you can search in. Um, there are, I haven't seen any videos, but there are um, instructions or directions that may be helpful. And then there's the settings, and that's what we'll mainly talk about for the rest of this video. So if you click on settings, it will take you to a menu of different settings that you have control over. And we'll go through each of these. Firstly, you'll see your Google Voice number. Don't worry too much about the settings here. Um, you can delete the account, the account at some point if you need to. Um, you likely won't need to click on change or transfer. If you look a little bit lower, um, you can see that um, I have two options here. I have a web option, um, which I'm using now on my computer, um, which I find, because I'm using this for work, the most useful. Um, and then I also have it linked to my cell phone. And that way, if I'm out away from my computer, I'm able to still receive um, and place calls. You can see here that you can also change the number that's linked to your Google Voice number. So if you wanted to change it to a different number, you, that is possible. I'm going to go to the left and click on Messages. Note you can also scroll up and down. Um, this is one long um, settings menu. For message forwarding, um, I do not have messages forwarded to my cell number. I do have them forwarded to the email address that I associated with this Google Voice number. But that option is up to you and you can just easily toggle it on or off. If you would like calls forwarded during the instructional day, you can forward the calls um, and you can shut it off when, whenever you'd like. Next, we'll look at calls. Here's a setting if you always want to use your phone to place calls. So if I were in um, where we saw the little keypad and I was punching in a number here, if I had this on, what would happen is I can place the call here and then hit the little call button, um, but once it starts ringing, it would actually transfer over to my cell phone. Again, I, I think it's very productive to um, use this on my computer, so that's I don't turn the setting on. Um, anonymous caller ID. Now this is one of the most important settings. Um, there are three very important settings that we're going to go over. Um, this one, firstly, um, is that you want to hide the caller ID on outgoing calls. Now even if I open my Google Voice app on my cell phone and I'm placing a call from the app, um, it will come up on the other person's phone with your cell phone number unless you have this on. And so you keep your cell phone number anonymous uh, by turning this, this very important setting on. Now for incoming calls, it's also important that you control where you want your calls to land. Normally, um, I do not turn my cell phone on. I want my calls to land on my computer. And so, but I can change the, any of these at any time. If I were walking away from my computer and I wanted to, the calls to go just directly to my phone, um, then I can change it this way. Now I have had it where both of these settings are on um, and I've been sitting in front of my computer with my cell phone next to me um, and just 
and had a call come in, they always go to my cell phone. And so if I want to force the calls to go to my computer, I just turn this setting off. I've scrolled up. Again, I'm, I'm not showing the scroll just so that I can mask my cell phone number, um, but I will go over the rest of these settings. You can get email alerts um, for missed calls. I don't have that on, uh, but it may be beneficial for you if you're not always sitting in front of your computer. Um, you can also screen the calls. So if someone calls your Google Voice number, it will actually ask them to state their name after the beep. And then when you pick up the call, you will hear that person's name. There's also an option to record the call. Um, I don't recommend this, especially for work. Now I've scrolled up a little. We're still in the calls menu setting. Um, and these next two settings are the other two very important settings um, that you want to make sure that you are controlling. Um, the first one is to show the Google Voice number as the caller ID when you're forwarding calls. What this means is that if I forward the calls to my cell phone number and then someone is calling my Google Voice number, when my cell phone rings, the phone number that I'm going to see is not the person's phone number, but it's going to be my Google Voice number. Um, and now I know in these, these days and times, we get a lot of um, robocalls or advertisements, etc. So if you don't have a student or parent cell phone number or phone number saved in your cell phone, you may just think that it's a random person calling and you may ignore the call. Or you may answer the call thinking it's someone else and not realizing it's going to be a student or a parent. Um, and so I always leave this on. So that way, if I know someone's calling my Google Voice number and I only give my Google Voice number to parents and students and guardians, um, then I know that I'm going to answer as my professional self um, and I'm, not, I'm going to anticipate that it's not going to be a friend or an advertiser, etc. Now the other important piece, and I mentioned that I would say this again, the other important part of this is that you want to save the Google Voice number in your cell phone. So for example, I've saved my Google Voice number in my cell phone and I've saved it under the contact name of Compton High School Google Voice. And I even added a picture of Compton High School to it. So that way, if this phone number rings, I see at the top of the phone Compton High School Google Voice and I have a big picture of Compton High School and I know that it's a parent or student calling. The other important feature um, that I want to talk about is Do Not Disturb. Now this will turn off message forwarding. So I have my messages forwarded to my computer or my cell phone. Um, but if I turn this off, so if it's Saturday or Sunday, or it's 6 p.m. on a Tuesday, and I'm done for the day, um, and I'm not taking calls anymore, I can turn this off, or turn this on, excuse me, and it will automatically send all of the calls to the voicemail. And not my cell phone's voicemail, but the voicemail that is saved on um, the Google Voice app, whether it's the computer um, app or the phone app. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but when I turned this on, something actually popped up over here to let me know that Do Not Disturb is on. So I'll watch up here in the corner, and I'll turn it off, and then I'll turn it back on. And this little kind of warning, if you will, or notification stays up uh, regardless of where I go. So even if I exit settings and I go back to calls or I'm looking at um, messages, etc., it is going to let me know that Do Not Disturb is on. Um, so what I've been doing is um, I leave this screen up um, as the last thing that I'm looking at when I close my computer at night so that when I open it back up in the morning, I can click the end now. Um, and that means that I'm available for parents or students to call. So we'll jump back to settings. And we'll click on Do Not Disturb again, which is where we left off. I'm going to turn this on. And then let's jump down to voicemail. Now this is also um, a great uh, tool um, because I don't know about you, but my cell phone voicemail um, does not say that I'm Dr. Mendoza. Um, it's the same greeting that I've had for years. Um, and so I want something a bit more professional. Now when you first look at this voicemail greeting, uh, what it's going to have is actually the Google Voice default. And it sounds the Google very generic. Call is not available. 
um, but it allows you to actually create your own greeting. And so this will allow you to say that you are Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so, or that you've reached Compton High School, etc. cetera. Um, and that way, um, parents and students feel a bit more comfortable um, that they're reaching out to um, their teacher or counselor. Hi, you've reached Dr. Mendoza, assistant principal at Compton High School. You can record multiple greetings, um, and then when you manage them, so if I had a different greeting at some point, um, I could set it as the active greeting. Um, I could set it as the active greeting or I can edit it. Um, if you want to record a greeting, you click record. Um, it's not recording yet, um, but once you click the green button, it starts to record. You can press stop, and then you can listen to it to decide if this is the one you want to save. Click the green button, it starts. You can redo it, and it'll go back to to square one, it'll ask if you want to redo it. Um, and then if you decide that that's the one that you want, then you would click save. If not, you can just close it up and discard it. You can also have voicemail sent to your email, um, which I do. This one is a bit more quality control um, in the sense that Google, um, the company, is going to analyze the voicemail transcripts. And since we have parents and students calling, um, I don't want to give them access to those, so I leave that off. The majority of these um, settings down below are not too important except for the security setting. Um, I want to point out that this there is um, an option to have Google kind of filter out calls, messages, or voicemails that it believes may be spam. Um, this is something that I leave off just because I'm I'm more weary of missing a call from a parent or student um, than having to, you know, kind of listen to and either delete or archive a spam um, call. Um, I've been using Google Voice um, for a little less than a year, and I personally have never received anything that I've identified as spam. Okay, I am going to close out settings. Just a final reminder that after you create your Google Voice number, Again, um, especially if it's being forwarded to your cell phone, you do want to save the number in your cell phone and save it under um, maybe Compton High School Google Voice um, so that way you're aware when a parent or student is trying to reach you. If you have any further questions about how to use Google Voice, please reach out to me via email and let me know how I can support you.